In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to solve three different vector problems involving airplane with a headwind, crosswind, and tailwind. So before we get started, we definitely want to make sure we're aware of what a headwind, crosswind, and tailwind are. And then we also want to know the method of adding vectors so that we can get our final answer of what the resultant velocity would be. So for our first one, a headwind is a wind that is hitting the head of the plane, which means that it's blowing against the motion of the plane. A tailwind means that it's pushing the back of it. So it's pushing in the same direction the plane is moving. And a crosswind is one that it's either going left or right, perpendicular, pushing the side of the plane. So for this one, it doesn't really matter too much as far as the problem solving method goes and understanding it. But we'll go ahead and say the crosswind is going to the right. So for each of these problems, what you want to do is you want to make sure you connect the vectors in the tip to tail method which means wherever one vector ends, that's when the next one starts. And just like regular addition, it doesn't matter the order in which you add them. So let me go ahead and add each of my vectors and then we'll see what the solution looks like for all three of them. All right, so I added all of them in the tip to tail method, which like I said, all you do is wherever one vector ends, that's where the next one starts. And again, it doesn't matter what order you place them in. So if for this one, the 10 was on the bottom and then the 30 was on the top, it would still move up 40. And then even this one, I went um, up and then over to the right, but I could have started with the eight and I just would have went over to the right and then up 30 and then I still would have ended in the same spot. So again, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to get too caught up in that. You just want to make sure you are careful about the tip to tail method. Now our answer is called the resultant. The resultant is drawing a vector from the beginning point to the end point, which is from there to there, there to there, and then from here all the way up. Okay, so for our first and our third one, they're pretty easy because it just goes up 30 and then it goes back 11. So that would be just 19 meters per second as my final resultant velocity. This one is um, even more simple. It just goes up all in the same direction. So it's just 30 plus 10 and that equals 40 meters per second. And then determine the direction of that kind of depends on the terminology that the actual question is using. So you might just say 19 meters per second forward or 90, 19 meters per second north. Um, it sort of depends on the wording of the actual question that you're reading. Okay, so for the last one, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. This one, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and where c is always the hypotenuse of your right triangle. So I'm just going to call this v because that is our final resultant velocity. And then what I can do is go ahead and use that Pythagorean theorem and solve for my final velocity. All right, so what I did is, like I said, I just used the Pythagorean theorem. I did a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I just call it v instead for velocity, but c just means it's representative of the hypotenuse of the triangle. So I squared both of these, add them together. I got 964. I square root both sides and I get a final velocity of 31.05 meters per second. All right, now I'm nearly done. Uh, for this one, you may want to find an angle if you want to um, be a little bit more specific with the direction. 
So if I were to find this angle here, I would have to use an inverse trig function. So I have all three sides of the triangle. So I could use sine, cosine, or tangent. Um, I'm just going to choose to use tangent. So when you want to find an angle, I'm going to do an inverse sine. And then here's my angle. I'm going to go opposite, which is 8, divided by the adjacent. The adjacent side is 30. And then this would be the hypotenuse side, which I'm not going to use. Okay, I press equals, and then in my calculator, I'm going to get 14.93 degrees for my angle. So there's a number of ways you can label that angle. So I'll go ahead and write 14.93 here. If you're using a diagram, 14.93 degrees might be fine. Um, other ways you could describe it is 14.93 degrees east of north. Okay, and when you're saying east of north, well, north is directly upwards on my page. So here is upwards straight north. And then if I'm tilting 14.93 degrees east, that means east is towards the right. So then that's why you would say 14.93 degrees east of north. Okay, if the angle was tilting to the left, because you had a westward crosswind, you would say 14.93 degrees west of north. Okay, so that's how that terminology is used if you need to be more descriptive with your angle. But that's how to solve the three different variations of an airplane vector problem. Thank you for watching and listening.